In this memory jogger, we will remind you of the differences among the concepts of push, pull, and flow. Here is the textbook definition of these three methods. When you are pushing material or work, you are simply following the plan or schedule and moving material to the next step without considering whether it is needed or not. Your measure of success in a push environment is scheduled adherence for your department. Whether the product actually gets finished or not is not your problem. When work or materials are being pulled, you can't actually move the work or material forward until there is a signal to do so, like an empty space, an empty container, or a physical card. Flow is a further refinement on pull, where you are moving units one at a time based on customer orders and also based on a pull signal. Let's now look at examples of these three methods. Let's now look at some practical examples of both push and pull in a manufacturing environment. Push doing work with no signal. Doing work without a work order or any other signal is possible, but it is the worst possible choice. You could be doing things that are not needed at all. Let's take this option off of the list if you don't mind. Push with a work order. The classic example of a push signal is a work order, which will specify a start date, a due date, and a quantity for a specific item. The goal for a work order recipient is to produce the quantity needed on the due date. If the requirements change with either the dates or the quantities needed, the work order would also need to be changed. Pull with an empty station. A simple pull method is to only move an item when the next downstream station is empty and available. The empty station quote unquote pulls the item from the upstream station. This is the minimum inventory method but balancing the workflow is a challenge if all items need to move at the same time to keep things flowing. Pull to an empty space. An empty space either on the floor or a workbench can act as a pull signal. It works like this. Build a unit and put it in the space. The space may allow more than one unit. Keep working at your station until that space is full. You are limited to the number of units allowed in the space, plus one unit at your station. These spaces are called in-process Kanbans, or IPKs, or FIFO lanes. The IPK option discussed previously may not work if the IPK cannot be seen easily. As an option, an empty container that can hold a specified number of units can act as a pull signal. When the empty container is delivered to the station, that is the signal to work. This concludes this memory jogger on the topic of push versus pull versus flow.